Hello, happy Thursday. Good morning, everyone. Today's January 28th. Let me make sure I copy this uh, link so that people can find us. All righty, so how are you all doing? I um, woke up at 6 a.m. after a really good night's sleep and <clears throat> there wasn't a reason as far as work or school for me to get up this morning, which was different. So I decided to go back to sleep and I am on here a little bit later, sorry about that. Those of you have been waiting, I know, hi, Michelle, it must be 1130, almost time for lunch, where you're at. <clears throat> Snow has melted, the streets are full of, you know, it's raining, it's supposed to rain really hard today after 12, and I'm going to run out and get the things that I need here in a few minutes after I talk to you all and then start work for the afternoon and people will be able to come over for their lessons rather than online. So it was 24 hours of whiteness here and <laughs> beautiful sight and I don't know how many pileups there were but I saw a few heard and saw a few photos of pretty bad car accidents, but that's all I've heard about. Um, I don't know about any other problems that happened in our county, but um, <laughs> driving in the snow without adequate tires or chains is just, just don't do it. That's what I concluded. We had a friend who went to take his kids to the snow area that was more so they could play in it and ended up in a seven car pileup. But they're they're not injured. So, oh my goodness. So here we are. Um, radical times we're living in. Feel very overwhelmed this morning with the love of God for us. As I woke up um, sensing the desire that he has to demonstrate his love for us and to woo us to himself and to make sure that we know that, that he is very present in our situation. And we are, we probably um, as a Christian people have not been tested quite like this in, um, in our lifetime. Maybe I'm forgetting <clears throat> other things like the Vietnam War and things like that were really difficult as well, but um, it surely feels like this is the grand test. So you and I are going to just call each other to remembering the loving kindness and the faithfulness of the Lord as much as we can. Call it to your memory. Um, tell yourself and tell others that God is, excuse me, faithful and he is ever present as we read um, a day before yesterday, yeah, that God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. I, I just think we should hold on to that. That was from uh, chapter 45 or 46, verse 5. God, write this down and put it uh, in your home somewhere where you can read it, that God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right early at the dawn of the morning. Every morning, if it's hard for you to get up and face the day, it's 
very hard to get up these mornings with reassurance and joy um, and secure feelings. Put this verse next to your bed. Put it somewhere in your bathroom where you can uh, read it in the in the early morning when you get up <clears throat> and say, God, I just believe that you're right here with me this morning and every morning to come and that you are going to help me early and you're going to help me focus on you and on what is good and right and kingdom. And so uh, he's in the midst of us. He's actually inside of us. We carry him. It's the greatest honor we'll ever have in our life to carry the presence of God. You want to know, you know, what is, you know, what could you put on your tombstone? Have someone put, she carried the presence of God. It's the greatest honor. That's the greatest assignment we could ever have. And so um, let's go to, to Psalm 48 today. Read that together. This is a psalm of the sons of Korah. And the Cor sons of Korah were from the tribe, the Levitical tribe. They were Levites, and that is the priestly tribe. And um, that's why they're doing so much of the psalm singing and um, so much having to do with the worship of God here in these psalms. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Fair and beautiful for elevation is the joy of all the earth, the Mount Zion, the city of David, the sides of the north, Mount Moriah, and the temple, the whole city of the great king. God has made himself known in her palaces for a refuge, a high tower, and a stronghold. For lo, the kings assembled, they came onward, and they passed away together. They looked, they were amazed, they were stricken with terror, and took to flight, affrighted and dismayed. Trembling took hold of them there, and pain as a woman in childbirth. With the east wind you shattered the ships of Tarshish. And as we've heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Selah, pause and think calmly of this. The establishment of the Lord is forever. We have thought of your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As it is your name, O God, so as is your name, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness, rightness, and justice. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your righteous judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Number her towers, her lofty and noble deeds of past days. Consider well her ramparts. Go through her palaces and citadels that you may tell the next generation and cease recalling disappointments. That's the word I wanted to get to right there. Underline that. Cease recalling disappointments. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even until death. He'll be our guide even until death. I shot that verse to someone last night. Uh, after a great talk with my cousin, um, just, I don't know why, in the last several months, I've just been able to have these wonderful talks with people on the phone. I guess we're slowed down enough that we take the time to reconnect. And um, I just love those, I love the first verse that says there in 13, um, and this is the amplified version, cease recalling disappointments. For, and then in verse 14, he'll be our guide even unto death. He'll be our guide even unto death. Nobody else is guiding us through our life unto death. He is. 
He is the one that wants to hop on and be in charge of the train we're traveling on. <laughs> He's the conductor and he is available to you to guide you. Hello, Melissa. And so all of us need to um, listen to Charles Spurgeon. Do you know who Charles Spurgeon is? Um, what a mighty man of God he was, a prolific writer, a pro prolific preacher um, in England. And gosh, you know, he, he left multitudes of sermons which have been put into books. Just um, listen to what he said. I, I believe it would have been in the 1800s. That I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Let me just look up. No, I don't want to do that because then I'll lose my place. Maybe one of you can look up when Charles Spurgeon was alive, but just listen to his admonition in one of his books called A Worthy Theme for Thought. Um, he is um, <clears throat> talking about how we need to think about the loving kindness of the Lord. And that is verse 11. Um, let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your righteous judgments. Walk around Zion. Go around about her. Number her towers, her lofty and noble deeds of past days. Consider well her ramparts. <clears throat> Go through her palaces and citadels that you may tell the next generation and others and and cease recalling disappointment. So he's saying, the Lord, or the writer here in Psalms is saying, don't talk about all the stuff that was disappointing to you. Talk about the righteousness, the faithfulness of God. Tell the next generation what God is really like, what he did for you. So here's what Charles Spurgeon says. And just imagine, you know, if you were sitting in the pew uh, at that point, he would have been admonishing us the same way that our we're admonishing one another's today. He says, my dear sister, you have talked about your rheumatism to at least 50 people who have been to see you. Suppose you tell the next visitor about the loving kindness of the Lord instead. <laughs> good, good on you, Chuck. And then, dear brother, we know that the trade is bad right now, for you have told us so every day. I don't know for how many years you've told us this. <laughs> you've had no capital when it started, yet somehow or another, you have managed to have something left even till now. He's trying to tell this guy, you still have your business and you still are afloat. Well, we know that old story, recount not the disappointments, the word says, could you not change your note just a little and talk about the loving kindness of the Lord instead? <laughs> he's at, he's at actually shifting atmospheres in the 1800s. He knows what he's talking about. Thank God for people like this who went before us. Yes, my friend, I know that many professing Christian people are not all that they profess to be. I've heard you say that ever so many times. You say... There is no love in the church. Well, so far as we can see, you are not overstocked with it. You say there is no zeal among the members, but have you any to give away to those who need it from yourself? Now, henceforward, instead of always harping on the faults and failings of God's people, which certainly are numerous enough, but have not become any fewer since you talked about it so much, would it not be better to thank and talk of the loving kindness of the Lord? <laughs> good, good going, Charles Spurgeon. Oh, yes, let us talk about the loving kindness of the Lord. So here, here we are in 2021. Let's type into the comments something that is of a good report. Let's see, I'll type in mine and you type in yours <laughs> and I'll read them aloud because we have so much that we could be disappointed about right now, right? This is like almost like an adult game that we're playing with each other because we have to force ourselves to get out of the 
not trying to sh to leave what we know to be true or what's manifesting in the earth right now. It's not the truth, heralding truth of the Lord. But <laughs> we need to shift the atmosphere around us. So what's my good report? Let me see here. Say that I... I hope you're typing up a good report. Okay, Melissa, my pain has decreased tremendously in the past two weeks. I don't know which pain you're talking about, but hallelujah. I said I slept for eight hours straight with no interruptions. Almost never happens. Last night and then an extra three on top of that. So I got 11 hours of sleep last night. You know that my body and my brain are happy about that. And Michelle is saying, I see more and more scripture posted on Facebook these days. Oh, that's so good. Awesome. So we are going to pray now. If anybody else is on here and you feel like chiming in, we welcome it. If you want to just, you know, uh, watch and not, you never have to feel like you have to. Um, we're going to pray now. Hold on one second. Let me get somewhere to do that. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> awesome. All right, you guys, let's pray into Psalm 48. Ready? God, we call you great and you're highly to be praised. You, Lord, we see you in the city of our God, the holy mountain. You are fair. You are beautiful. You are actually our joy. You are the joy of the whole earth, Lord. You are joy. We invite your joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We say more, more, more joy to us right now in Jesus' name. Come. And um, Lord, we look to you who has made yourself known in the palaces of Mount Zion in the temple there. And we look to you who is our refuge. You are our high tower. You are our stronghold. And the kings assemble, they come on, came together, they passed away together, they look, they are amazed, they're stricken with terror and took to flight, afflighted, affrighted and dismayed. Lord, only you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we stand back amazed at who you are. And even though the kings of the earth throughout the centuries and even now, the presidents, uh, the dictators, the ones who rule their countries, Lord. They're mere men. They're mere men, Lord. And we look to you to set your people free, whether it's in North Korea, Venezuela, China, Brazil. We call out the nations that they come under the government of the Lord and the kingdom of God would become on the earth as it is in heaven, kingdom of our God. May you wrap up your people in great assurance and love today. May you come into their dwelling places, Lord, and may you still the tongues of the tyrants and those who rule without any consideration of what is happening to their people. Lord, we pray for those that are starving. We pray for those that are freezing cold in the winter. Pray, Lord, for those who are being commanded to stay home. 
and to shut their businesses down and to not have what they need. Lord, we pray also for those who are sick and who are without loved ones to comfort them, who are being <clears throat> kept away because of the fear of sickness. Lord, we see you in the midst of all of this. Would you send your angels into every hospital room? Would you send your angels into every prison? Would you send your angels to every homeless person on the streets who is cold? Lord, would you send your angels into all the orphanages in Korea, in, in other places in South America, Lord? Would you send your angels into the universities that have decided that you are not to be followed any longer? Oh, Jesus, how we need you. We cover the earth with the blanket of the goodness of the Lord, the loving kindness of the Lord. We shift the atmospheres with the speaking out of the loving kindness of the Lord, the preciousness of God, the preciousness of the cross, the preciousness of the blood that was shed for human, for mankind, for humankind. We, we say, let the blood of Jesus be spread amongst the earth at this time juncture in time, Lord. The Holy Spirit fill the realms. Let the Holy Spirit come into the <clears throat> atmosphere. Where we're living, let us be a conduit of people who are seeking after you, Lord. As we have, have seen, Lord, that you are in the midst of her in Psalm 46, where we just brought that scripture up, Psalm 46, 5. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God will help her in the early morning, in the dawn. Lord, each person that is on this right now, I just speak the power of the Holy Spirit to be on you and present and with you and fire it you, firing you up to be able to speak out the truth, speak out the love of God, speak out the goodness of the Lord all the days of your life, all the days of your life, all the days of your life, all the days of your life. All the days of your life, let him come over you. Let him dwell amongst you. Let him come over you in power this morning. Reassurance, presence of the Lord everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, right now in your families, in your homes. Everything that is concerning you. In the name of Jesus, breakthrough. Loving kindness of God, we call upon you today to break through every situation. Mercy of God, we call upon you right now to break through every situation. <clears throat> and Father, we see here, <clears throat> back to the Psalm 48, as we are praying, we see here that the kings of the earth were struck with terror that they were affrighted, that they were dismayed, that they were trembling, that they were as a, a woman who is in child labor. We just look to you, God, for these leaders on the earth right now who need a word from you. We call upon the prophetic voices in the earth, in every nation, to be able to have an audience with their king to give them direction, to give them favor, give those, those prophetic voices favor, to turn the king's heart, to put them into a direction that is um, beneficial for the people. We pray, Lord Jesus, that as you shatter the ships of Tarshish with an east wind, that you would shatter the vessels of dishonor with the winds of your spirit that you would bring about a tumult of, of wind that would 
keep those dishonoring vessels from reaching their destination, that there would be no safe harbor for them, and that you would break up every scheme and every um, demise, everything that they have in their minds and hearts to do that is not from you, that is of a wicked plan. God, we thank you that you've established your kingdom forever and ever and ever. The city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God is established forever. And your steadfast love, we think of it now. We turn our minds on things that give us peace. And therefore, we think about your steadfast love that is sure that is available, that is true, <clears throat> that is peace, peace giving. And as your name is God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Your right hand is full of justice. We call about your, about your right hand of justice and righteousness on the earth. And we say, Lord, that Mount Zion is glad. The daughters of Judah are glad and all of them are glad because they are recalling to mind the righteousness of the Lord right now and so we we just recall recall into our spirits we put our hands over our hearts we recall the righteousness the rightness and the justice of the Lord we say be glad to our souls be glad to our minds receive the joy of the Lord receive the gladness of the Lord this morning we walk about Zion. We go around her, the spirit. We go around her towers. We go around her citadels. We consider her ramparts. We go through her palaces. We say that this is God's dwelling place. This is the kingdom of God. And we decide now to tell the next generation of the goodness of the Lord, how kind he is, how praiseworthy he is how merciful he is. And we use our tongues and our lips and our mouths to speak these things out, that he be glorified, that he be magnified in the earth. Our God is our God forever and ever, and to our death, he will be our guide. So I just bless you with that, that all the way, all through the years of your life, he will guide you and bring you home to him in his timing and in his in his way after he has purposefully lived through you. May you be assured, may you be comforted in this for you and your family, your children, everyone that concerns you, everyone that whose love you have great love for, whose love you receive. May you, may you know that the Lord is right there with you, involved now, tomorrow, and all the way through your life. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All right, bless the Lord. So tomorrow, um, on Friday, we will be in Psalm 49. Sorry, I'm going to light off. Psalm 49 tomorrow, and then Saturday, Psalm 50. And um, that will be one third of the way through the 150 Psalms. Can you believe that? Let me get that here out of my way. It's hard to know which way to when you're looking in the camera. So one third of the way by Saturday, Lord willing. And um, that you will continue to dwell on the faithfulness, the righteousness, the loving kindness of the Lord today. And I'm so glad to hear what you're doing and how you're doing. If anybody else wants to say anything before we go, feel free. God bless you. <clears throat> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.